Hey guys, it's Shelby, and today I wanted to talk to you guys about food waste. So recently, Catherine from the blog Going Zero Waste, if you don't know her, you really, really should. She is very much a leader in the zero waste movement, and uh, she has achieved some really great things. But she recently challenged a few people on Instagram to acknowledge their food waste, reduce their food waste, just to bring awareness to how much food we waste in the US. From what I've heard, 40% of the food that is grown in the US goes to waste, which that's insane. That's so many wasted resources from growing the food, so like the nutrients that go into the soil, the water that goes into the plants, and then the waste that ends up in landfills because of that, the waste transporting all that food, all of those sort of things. So much waste. So we should definitely be doing something about it, and today I wanted to share with you guys 10 different things you can do with your food to reuse it so that it doesn't go to the landfill and we're not wasting it. So let's go ahead and get into it. I wanted to start with the more commonly known things and then move into the creative stuff in just a little bit. So we all know what composting is, right? I hope we do. I have a video about it, how to compost in an apartment, so if you want to see that, I will link it up right here. Composting is a great way to get rid of food scraps and food that may go bad before you get to it or things like that. It's a really natural process of turning food back into soil so you can grow more food. It's a very natural way that the world works before humans came in and took influence over it. So that is the first thing you can do. Whether your city does composting for you or you wanna build one in your backyard or you wanna take some of the tips from my video that I mentioned a little bit ago, you can start composting right now. So I recommend getting a compost bucket that you can keep in your kitchen. So whenever you're cooking and you have like the outside of like a garlic clove or an onion or a banana peel, you can just put that in your compost bucket and then you can take it out to your compost later. Whether you have, like I said, your municipality does it or you have a backyard compost or you're gonna take it to your farmer's market and let the farmers reuse it it's really really beneficial to have that in your home or outside on your doorstep like we have ours a brand called the turtle planet sent me some of their compostable bags to share with you guys so it's not sponsored but they did want me to tell you that they have compostable trash bags made of plants not petroleum which is really really cool so I'm gonna link those in the description box if you've been looking for a compostable bag they are three gallon bags so they're gonna work really well with a compost bucket like I was talking about but if you want something bigger for your trash can, I can link one of those below as well. Um, but a lot of you guys have been asking me for like compostable things to do with your dog's poop and compostable buckets and even trash bags. So I'll leave those resources below. But that is a huge tip to have a readily available compost stash in your kitchen or close by. My next tip is to be realistic whenever you're grocery shopping. So we probably all are familiar with going to the store hungry and buying way more food than we need, or going to the store and thinking we're someone that we're not, right? I have been known to buy vegetables and fruits that I do not like because I want myself to start liking them, which I'm not against. I have actually been successful with quite a few of those things, buying things I don't like and making myself eat them until I do like them, but we don't want to be buying things that we're going to throw away otherwise, right? So I'm really lucky that if I do buy something that I don't like, normally Madison will eat it. But you want to be realistic with yourself when you're grocery shopping and make sure you're not just buying things that are going to end up as trash anyway. I'm stopping this video for a very appropriate interruption. I am making this right here. This is like a couscous quinoa thing and I don't really like it. So we're going to get Madison to try it. Bruh. I already told you I don't like this stuff. It, I was telling them that you eat things whenever I don't like them. The fuck I do? I it helps like us with shit. reduce our food waste. Fuck that, not if it's this. <laughs> That one kind of runs into my next tip, which is keep a non-cluttered fridge. Keep inventory of what you have and don't have too much so that you can see everything that you have and you can use it up. By filling up your entire fridge, you may feel really accomplished and stocked, but chances are things are going to go bad before you can get to them or you're gonna forget that you have certain things in your refrigerator. So make sure you're keeping a neat, clean pantry and fridge so that things aren't going bad. Okay, now that I'm done being Mommy Shelby, let me get into the more creative ideas that I found on the internet to share with you guys. So the first one is one that I have done before and that is save veggie scraps or ends and stuff like that 
put them in the freezer until you need to make a stock. So I make my own vegetable stock every now and then when I have enough things to put into it. This is literally things like onion peels, uh, ends of broccoli, ends of carrots, celery stalks, things like that. And then you can add all of those into water, add some spices, and get a really good veggie broth out of that. So that's a really good tip. Another thing you can do is keep seeds or pits or ends that can regrow and then regrow your food. So there are actually tons of foods that are common for us to eat that you can just regrow in your home or outside in your backyard. Like celery, I know you can literally just put the stock back in and it will start regrowing. I have not had immense success with that, but people in my community garden are doing it literally right now. I also have someone in my community garden who is growing a pineapple doing that. So you can cut off the top of a pineapple, plant it, and a plant will grow back out of it. How cool is that? My sister has also tried a few times to regrow an avocado tree from the avocado pit. And I know that you can do it, I've just never been able to do it. So take that into consideration when you're throwing your food out. Another thing you can do is chop up or mince or blend or whatever you wanna do certain foods and freeze them. Not so recently, probably like a month or two ago, I found a ton of spinach in a dumpster. <laughs> because I'm a dumpster diver. Also a great way to reduce food waste. I should have said that. Tip number three is dumpster dive for your food. No, but really, I found a lot of spinach in a dumpster and I didn't want to throw it away, but I knew it was going to go bad before I could put it in my smoothies. So what I did is I blended it up with a little bit of water and then I put that in an ice cube tray and now I can use those throughout the next month or so in my smoothies. That way I didn't waste the spinach and it's not going to go bad. You can do that with other things such as herbs in your house. Spinach is good to do that with. You can do that with almost anything actually that you commonly use in your smoothies and you don't want to go bad. You can even do it with like strawberries, anything. That's a really, really good idea to keep in your head. Another thing you can do that I actually did last year semi-successfully is save food scraps to make natural dyes. So last year I made dyes out of cabbage and what was the green? Spinach. I did cabbage and I did spinach. And then if you mix in baking soda and vinegar into those things, it changes the color. It was super, super cool. I might try to do that again this year for Earth Day uh, for a video for you guys. But anyway, you can save cabbage and spinach and a lot of different foods actually. I know you can do it with beets and onions and things like that. Save the scraps to boil in the water and make natural dyes and they make the most beautiful earth tone colors. So if you haven't looked into natural dyeing, I definitely recommend that. Something I recently learned, I've seen it in a few places on Pinterest, is you can keep banana peels and then use it to clean your plants, your house plants. I know that sounds weird and I at first was like, who would do that? Who would clean their house plants? But then I realized that my Monstera actually that I've had for a while is pretty dirty. Since I got it, it's been like that and it could definitely use a good cleaning. So I went ahead and saved a couple banana peels and did that use them before I composted them right so the idea to do all of this is to reuse the plant before you put it in the compost just give it another reason and use it up to its fullest potential before you turn it back into soil anyway a great thing to do with your citrus peels is actually make your own cleaning spray so the cleaning spray is like an all-purpose spray that's what we use around our house I'll link the video right here with all of the stuff that we use in our home for cleaning um, and that is one of the things we do so we keep our orange peels basically you just want to put those in vinegar for a week I think is what we did last time and then you mix that mixture half with water half vinegar and it's a great all-purpose cleaner for services around your home there are a ton of great uses for citrus peels if you have a garbage disposal you can throw them down there blend them up and then it's a great way to clean it out you can also boil them in water on the stove maybe with a little bit of cinnamon or whatnot and it gives really great aroma in your home so there's a lot you can do with citrus peels definitely never just throw so it just peels away. Other things I've done before is turn old bread into bread crumbs or into bread, um, what do you call it? Did I say crumbs? I meant croutons. <laughs> you can turn them into croutons or bread crumbs. I've used them as bread crumbs in recipes before as well. So definitely keep that in mind in case you have any bread that goes stale. And the last tip I have for you guys is if you are a coffee drinker, make sure you save those coffee grounds. They're really, really great for your compost and to make back into soil, but they're also really great to make into a natural body scrub. So the caffeine within it makes your skin very plump and it's really good for your skin. It's great at getting off dead skin. It smells great, of course all of the above. So definitely before you just toss your coffee grounds, 
find another use for them. Okay guys, well those are all the tips I wanted to share today. If you want to see another one of these videos, make sure you give this one a thumbs up and let me know in the comments down below. I also always love to ask you guys kind of like a question of the day, but I just like to give you a reason to comment because I love hearing your feedback. So today, if you have any tips or tricks that are having to do with food waste, leave them in the comments so that I can read them and so that other people around can read them and get more ideas for how they can reduce their food waste as well. I love working together and coming up with ideas so that we can reduce our waste. It's very, very exciting. Thank you again to Catherine, again from Going Zero Waste, for challenging us to address food waste. It's very important and I think people overlook it sometimes. So thanks for watching you guys and remember until next time, create the peace.